Good morning, I'm Pastor Carlos Jones, and this is Pastor Ricky Bradshaw, and we also have Pastor Ken Sinclair with us today, and we are discussing a great idea that we want to bring to Fort Bend uh, County for the county uh, to be able to uh, invoke a church-wide, city-wide, county-wide uh, prayer walk. And so I called Pastor uh, Ken, and I told him about the idea, and uh, he had some very, very great nuggets and ideas to add to this particular project. And so I brought these two on today to be able to discuss, be able to give us some wisdom, and be able to share out how this can be a very impactful moment for our county. And so I'll shoot over to Pastor Ken, and he can kind of tell us a little bit about something that they've done in the past that he may encourage other pastors to do as well. Yeah, yeah. first of all, let me tell the story as I, as I remember hearing it from uh, C. Peter Wagner. And, you know, 30 years ago, he was the, quote, church growth guru kind of guy. And he told the story about a little city in California, Hema, California. It was in, in an area that had that was on a Indian reservation, and they began to realize that a lot of churches in that little local area were having all kinds of conflict. Mm. Uh, pastors and wives in good shape would move in; they start having marital conflicts. Wow. Uh, one of the churches, an assembly church, had a prostitute doing business on the roof of the church. Wow. Things like that, just strange things. They began to do some. Uh, exploration of what was the history of that little area there. Found out that there had been two competing Indian tribes just before the settlers ever came. The one tribe aggressed the other one. This tribe escaped into a canyon that later on became known as Massacre Canyon because that's what happened. They massacred this other tribe. Uh, they realized what had happened and the historic uh, animosity, resentment lingered with that land, that area there. So they actually prayed, got together, asked the Lord what to do. They got representative from each of those two tribes. They came together, had discussions, prayer, uh, service, uh, worship service, reconciliation, had the Lord's Supper together, went out to the reservation, had scripture verses that talked about Lord breaking the curse, drove them in the ground. Mm. Uh, and in that, that was the most violent Indian reservation in the U.S. Wow. In that next intervening year, there was not one homicide. Wow. So they saw from darkness to light, mm -hmm. and the only thing that they could see that made any difference at all was we said, you know, there's a spiritual history in that. So uh, uh, we, we moved into a property in 84 on Brook Street in Sugarland, mm -hmm. and we realized, okay, there's a history here of Imperial Sugar because uh, the imperial sugar was manned by slaves. Mm -hmm. And when the slaves were released, they didn't have their manpower. So a, a system was set in place to re-enslave blacks by the pig laws and hunting rights and things like that that got them in prison and then they could contract for prison labor. Mm -hmm. okay? So we realized that our property was probably on the encampment just mm -hmm. south of imperial sugar there where, they, where the prisoners were camp when they worked wow. the property wow. and there, there's a lot of history in that and there's a uh, you, you I'll let you talk about the the war because you, know, <laughs> uh, you probably know that a lot better than I do but we realized and so we walked our 10 acres we walked it and prayed mm -hmm. that God would come mm -hmm. and deal with a spiritual history that had not been, so far as we know had not been healed or even addressed. Mm -hmm. Some of the streets in Sugarland are historic names connected with Imperial Sugar. Mm -hmm. Some pretty violent history there. And so we walked and prayed, asked God's redemptive power to work in our area. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that that area there now I believe is experiencing freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, that it would not have had had we not recognized, okay, we Salt did just, yeah. we, we, you moved us here for a purpose. Right. And I believe that's what prayer yeah. boxes are about. Mm -hmm. Bringing to our mind the history of why some of the communities struggle the way they do right. in a way that isn't just rationally known, mm -hmm. but is spiritually understood. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. That's yeah. good. Well, I, I did want to piggyback off of that because I, I moved into that area as well. I'm just uh, one red light from yes, no. where most of that took place and some of that still hangs loose there called Four Corners. And uh, I had no idea that I was being moved into that community as a, a transformational agent. Mm -hmm. uh, that's who I am. That's what I'm trained to do. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always asking the Lord, why the famine? Mm -hmm. And so I spent time fasting and praying uh, for 40 days and I would get up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and I would go into the neighborhood. I would get in my car 
And when I turned into Four Corners, I would weep. Mm. I couldn't explain it. And I'd get out of the car and I would just stand on the property. And I said, Something, something's going on here. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, so what's happening? So I go to the YMCA in A-Leaf mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm standing at the water fountain and Reginald Moore, which a park is named after Reginald now, yeah. uh, he's home with the Lord. They named a county park one block from his home. They, they built it and didn't have a name mm. and gave it to Reginald. But, but Reginald met me at the water fountain at the YMCA. And he said he had this document, research that he's done. He's a research. You go to his house, he got newspapers to see it. <laughs> his wife said, well, you get him out of here. <laughs> so anyway, he said, I, I, I think you need this. He had no idea that I had been praying. No, no idea I've been fasting. And God spoke sacred. to him. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you need to get us Ricky. And he said, this is the Jay Bird Woodpecker War. I said, Jay Bird who? <laughs> Woodpecker <laughs> what? <laughs> Woody who? <laughs> he says, no, no, no. This is a war that took place um, not too far from us. Mm. And it was about the white Democrats and the moderate Democrats who partnered with the the Republicans, which were all freed slaves, mm. the Republicans, wow. and they they got into a war, and the white Democratic Party were former slave owner children, kind of thing, mm -hmm. and they, they wanted their land back, but something happened, a scrimmage, and um, and they kicked out this Republican uh, moderate Democrat Party out, wow. and the sheriff became, by order of the governor, uh, the sheriff now was replaced by and the mayor and all the political figures were replaced by the white Democratic Party. Mm. And they came up with, again, the pig law. I had no idea about the pig law, yeah. uh, which is if you own pigs, you have to have papers. Well, yeah, this, you have to have a receipt that these, paper, these pigs were bought by you yeah. and owned by you. Now they had horses, the Republican uh, Lincoln's party gave, gave uh, the free slaves horses and land and, 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 and cows and gave them papers, right? Uh, Four Corners is an incorporated city. You go there now, take a picture on, on your iPhone, it says Four Corners, mm -hmm. Texas. Yeah, it's yeah. still there. Yeah. Right? So anyway, make a long story short, they, they, uh, they had um, erected this pig law by the state legislators, a law that if you own pigs and the pigs belong to the freed slave, I mean to the uh, slave owners, and when the, when the Republican government came through, they, they released all these pigs. So the, this region has the largest wild pig yeah. population wow. in Texas <laughs> at that time. Right. And so they were just capturing pigs. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. they were making pretty good money off of it, yeah. uh, cur cur curating the pigs and all that good stuff and selling them. But what got to them is that all of a sudden you got a sheriff pulling up at your, your ranch or your, your farm and, and said, where are your papers for your cows, your horses? And, all this stuff, and you got it, right? You got some pig, you got a big pig farm back here. Well, where did you get those pigs from? And they were wild. You stole them from somebody that owned them in the past. Wow. And it's like the crack law. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Take, take it over downtown, kind of thing. Yeah. So I said, okay, this, this research is very impactful. So we started prayer walking around Four Corners and prayer walking in Fort Bend County, asking God to show us what He wants. And eventually, uh, we discovered the results of that mm -hmm. after we did all of that. Mm -hmm. Someone asked for a 10-10-20-20 transformation revival inside of the Sugarland baseball stadium mm -hmm. back on October the 10th, 2020. And uh, the leaders of that group got in contact with me and says, can you help us to uh, um, make a, uh, some resolutions and some declarations around this um, a woodpecker jaybird war thing mm -hmm. that happened in Fort Bend County. And I said, sure. So I, I went out there and I did that. And the first thing that we needed to do once we found out what happened is to repent mm -hmm. uh, and, and take, take responsibility for the condition of our land. Yeah. And so we did. And then right after that, <clears throat> uh, the leaders called me and said, Ricky, it's like a year has passed and we haven't seen any change. I said, have you, have you not read the newspaper lately? Like that, right? And he said, what do you mean? I said, you know anything about um, the 95, which were yeah, yeah, in Sugar Lane? And he said, well, yeah, we, we know about that. He said, you, do you know where they were uh, bitten by mosquitoes? It's called Oyster Creek, uh, right behind Sugar Land Mill, right? Yeah. I said, that's where we 
ask God to forgive us <laughs> and to <laughs> clean and to heal our land. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the 95 were found. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, wow. the Houston Astros win the, the World Series. <laughs> and then they buy the stadium and change the mascot <laughs> from a skeeter <laughs> to a space cowboy. Wow. Because they died of malaria yeah. fever because right. of mosquito bites. Wow. These uh, these prisoners, they were outside in, in camps, yeah. and they were all around the uh, Oyster Creek wow. area. Yeah. So now you see the results of it. Wow. And, and, and the Astros has brought so much great economy to this region. Yeah. And uh, lots of African Americans are working in there yeah. with business. Yeah. They are like the ones that are owning the business right. to do the service right. for that, that wow. part. Wow. And so you look at the, the, the results is not necessarily you know, a great revival on Sunday morning, right. but it's the healing of our land. Healing. And I think that's the thing that, that I hear a lot of people say, we need revival. I'm like, I don't know if we need more church services. <laughs> we're not sure if that's exactly what we need, but we need to have experiences where there's freedom, where there's opportunity, where yeah. where the spirit, of, there's freedom. There has to be a, a, a level of liberation that comes mm -hmm. to our county. And uh, it's so great to, to have these historians that are here with us. And uh, my prayer is that as we uh, get ready for this prayer walk, whenever we do it, whether it's this year or next year, that we continue to hear more stories and things are uncovered. And God can get the glory from all of it. And I pray that what we do here in Fort Bend County can light a, fly, a fire all around uh, the, the United States of America and also Amen. go globally. And I think that's what spiritual revival is all about. Mm -hmm. Us being able to put some work to the ground and make sure that his kingdom will come yeah. and his will will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So thank you guys so much for this. I am so excited about this. You'll be hearing more from these gentlemen. Thank you guys for being with us. And uh, we'll continue this conversation to look at the time, the place, and what areas we'll be able to look at for this, this countywide uh, prayer walk that we'll put together. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Peace.